the seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Repentance, atonement, sorrow. Conversion, transform, changed. Justification, validation, legalization. Sanctification, consecration, purification. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, beginning. Redemption, liberation, deliverance, freedom. Perfection, excellence, and faultlessness. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We honor Christ who is our life. We honor Apostle Allen and Pastor Allen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pick up where we, this is our third week in this particular section. And it is because the Holy Spirit will not let me leave this area. And I truly believe that when we ask what it is that the people may need, we shall receive. And so on last week, we shared with you scripture text over in Acts the 19th chapter. I'm going to start at the first, so I'm going to read Acts 19, 1 through 7. Now, what I find with this scripture text, it is letting us know that after salvation, there is more. We have a faith unto salvation. And then comes the component of faith. And so there is more for us than just believing unto salvation. There is more that our father in heaven has for us. And so in Acts 19, beginning at the first verse, it says that it came to pass that while Apollos was at Cornith, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now, they are disciples, which means that they went through the process of hearing a preached word, teach word, and scripture also says, in the day that you hear my voice, heart not your heart. So they heard the preaching, the teaching, it pricked their heart, it brought about conviction unto salvation and so therefore they in turn said i believe what you're saying i want to receive this christ as my lord and savior also so they are disciples we are disciples that is the very beginning disciples are developed and groomed and they grow and then they in turn groom and grow other disciples it's a process Verse two says, he said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit is another term, Holy Ghost. It's all the same. It says something, this is significant. They said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost, which tells me that the preaching that they received was limited. Scripture also says that one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. So somebody came along and planted a seed. Now Paul is going to come and water the seed. And God is going to give the increase, which is the Holy Spirit. That's what we need. We need an increase in our life increase you've been working on your job for a long time uh some jobs after 90 days you get what you get an increase because they give you an introductory pay after 90 days you've proven yourself you get the actual pay rate for that position every year you get a review and in hopes of doing what getting a pay raise also getting some elevation on that job going up into higher levels more responsibility more delegation that's up under your belt there's more than just getting in the door more than more to it than that and so they said we haven't even heard 
okay? Verse three says, and he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism, which is absolutely nothing wrong with that. The ones who came and planted, planted what they knew. Same thing in our lives today. In our life's journey, we're going to cross paths with individuals and they're only going to give us a portion of what they're supposed to deliver unto us. But what I find even more intriguing and interesting is in this is the more we grow in Christ, the more we're going to find, I don't have enough of him. I don't have enough. There is more. And so I find that I don't have enough of Christ in the works of the Holy Spirit in my life. There's that hunger and that thirst that you desire more. You, you know, you, everybody goes through this. I know we've all heard people say, I, I, I know that there's more to it, but every believer will experience a point in their Christian walk to say their Christ-like walk. I should say it got to be more to it than this. It is more to it than this. It is more to it than just coming to services on the scheduled times. God is not restricted to Sunday, Wednesday, Friday. If your service on a Saturday, he is not restricted of those days. He is not restricted of those time frames. that he is only in operation from this hour to those hours. Listen, he is a God of all time, of all, of all day. He working when we sleep and he's at work and he has some individuals who are obedient to his voice, who will get up and work as well. And when I say work, I mean get up and, and pray through the night, intercede for the night, uh, throughout the night. And, and, and you have some, and, and we don't all have the same job, okay? We don't all have the same job. If you have four ministries in the room, if all four ministries only do feeding of the hungry, well, then who clothing them? Because we all can't do the same job. Now we may come together collectively. You might get some ministries that, that is their mission and their purpose. That's something different. But we're not all going to do the same job. There is more to us that he wants to do in our lives than we could ever think or imagine. We're going to get to that because, because scripture also says that miracle signs and wonders will follow those that believe. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. The more that's the more, because as you are a believer and you are proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, then guess what? Every time you proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, miracle signs and wonders are supposed to follow you. And you know what those miracle signs and wonders are? A life has changed. Mm -hmm. A heart is converted. Blinded eyes are open. Deaf ears are open. Demons are cast out. Those are the miracle signs and wonders that follow those who believe. But before we can even get to that, then we must deal with the reality of once I receive Christ, I must accept the fact that there is more to this Christ-like living than just saying, I believe. There's more to it than that. Verse four says, then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. So you see, there's more after. They were baptized unto repentance. After that, now they're being baptized unto the Holy Spirit. So there is more. There is more for our lives. Water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus of these 12 people at Ephesus testifies that they had saving faith and were born again by the spirit. This process, this pre precedes their being filled with the Holy spirit. 
the Holy Spirit came on them. This event occurs some 25 years after the first Pentecost. Yet, the pattern of these 12 people receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit is consistent with the normal pattern already presented by Luke. They believed in Jesus and were born again by the Spirit. So that's a process. After they were baptized in water, Paul laid his hands on them and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Luke never presents the outpouring of the Spirit as something one could only perceive by faith. Rather, he shows it is it to be a knowable and identical experience capable of being verified objectively. Speaking in tongues was internal and visible proof that the Holy Spirit had come upon these followers of Jesus. Now, let me say this right here. And I'm going to back this up in scripture because I don't want anybody to feel that every time they pray or and exalt and they don't go into speaking in tongues that they haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. It is one of the evidences of it. And it, as, it is as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. So don't, don't, we have to bind the hands of the enemy that says, well, I'll never speak in tongues. That does not mean you were not baptized and that you're not filled. Okay. That means that it is as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. And so that's over in Acts, the second chapter. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's read that. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Listen to this. As the Spirit gave them utterance. It is the Holy Spirit that gives the power, that ignites the authority, that gives us these gifts, the spiritual gifts. And one of those spiritual gifts is speaking in tongues. It's as he give utterance. And so sometimes... Uh, and, and I see it so, I see it a whole lot going on today where people are mimicking speaking in tongues. They're making jokes out of it. It's more and more and more evident. And so try the spirit by the spirit. What tongue are you really speaking? A couple of months ago, I had a dream and I knew the person in the dream and they were standing and they were speaking in tongues. And the Holy Spirit said to me in the dream, I want you to stop and listen. And he said to me in the dream, she made up her own language and she was actually cursing. But it sounded like speaking in tongues. And if we look online today and look at all the comics and all this other stuff, we see people mimicking and speaking in tongues. They have heard it so often that they have begun to mimic what they hear in the church. I remember years ago, my mom had this very good friend and that's what one of her daughters did. She had heard her mom so much speak in tongues that she would do it. So that's why it's as the spirit give you utterance. And then what spirit? What spirit? Because just as there is a Holy Spirit, there is a demonic spirit. And so don't try to force speaking in tongues. You might hear it in your spirit. The Holy Spirit will bear witness with himself. He'll bear witness with what's going on. The Holy Spirit wants to dwell in a clean, untainted place. Speaking in tongues during your time of prayer, that's for your edification. 
when it's in an open congregation and, and someone is speaking in tongues, there should be an interpretation. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that out that if you are an individual um, and, and you have gone according to Acts 19 and 2, we read that, have you received since you believed, you believe by faith, okay? You have been baptized, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's not a one-time feeling. We are to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. He refreshes us. He renews us so that we can do the works of the spiritual gifts. Anytime Peter or Paul or any of the other apostles stood to declare the word of God, it was when the Holy Spirit fell upon them that gave them that unction, that gave them that power, that gave them that authority to illuminate the voice above chaos to declare the goodness of the Lord. So don't let the enemy come and say, oh, well, you don't speak in tongues. You haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is one of the evidences, and it is as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Okay? Don't don't let don't let nobody come along and tell you, I ain't never heard you speak in tongues. You haven't been baptized. There are other evidences going on in your life. And one of those evidences is obedience. You are obedient to the word of God. He tells you to move, you move. You have the gifts, you have other gifts. But don't 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 let nobody put that bondage on you. Because nowadays, like I said, it is so much going on now that people are actually mimicking speaking in tongues. I see it more and more every single day. And listen, they got it down pat. They got it down pat. They don't, listen, they, they got practice shouts. <coughs> Turn it on. Turn it off. I ain't never seen so much. This is the last and evil days. I have no idea how you can comfortably get up out of your seat, come to the front, shout, and when you're done, you go back to your posture and walk back. What kind of Holy Ghost is that? It's as the Spirit gives you utterance. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't act unseemly. Uh-uh. No. The Holy Spirit is not unseemly. So I just wanted to, to bring that out for those who need to become concrete in their salvation. Where some are questioning, well, I don't do that. I don't do that. Am I really saved? Yes. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. You believe it in your heart, you confess it. That's faith of salvation. But there is more to it after that. And so you're going to begin to say, there's more. I find that I want more of Christ. As I'm receiving what he has to offer me, since believing as well as accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior, listen to this, doors will begin to open. We're going to get to that in scripture. There is more for you. Let's go over to Mark 16. Mark 16. Miracle signs and wonders shall follow those who believe well guess what should be following each and every one of us who believe miracle signs and wonders those miracle signs and wonders are the mere fact that when you pray God is attentive to your prayer and that he acts and he answers your prayer that's a miracle sign and wonder that when you uh, if you are instructed lay your hand suddenly on no man if you are instructed to lay your hands on someone, you might, you might have the gift of healing. You could be instructed to lay your hands and pray for someone. You believe by faith the gift that is in operation in you 
and you believe the word of God, you believe the instructions, lay your hand and you listen to the Holy Spirit and he'll begin to direct you on how to pray. Healing will take place in the body. Uh huh. If you are one, um, I, uh, you, uh, there are some who have a gift of uh, a praying for a breakthrough. You intercede for individuals who need a breakthrough. I believe that you're going to get a breakthrough. That whatever, whatever you're led to pray about, you have a belief system. You are being led. This is the more. This is the more after you believed, after you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is more for us to do for the kingdom of heaven. Remember that song, I'm looking for a miracle? Mm -hmm. Beautiful song, I absolutely love it. But are we accepting are we receiving the gifts that he has for us for those miracles to take place? Because remember, as we read the scriptures, God performed miracles through individuals. He performed miracles by giving instructions. And when the instructions were followed, he gave the instructions to an individual. They told somebody what to do. Uh, for instance, Naaman the leper. The prophet didn't touch him. The prophet gave him some instructions. He got those instructions from heaven. He just told the man what to do. Yeah. Now he was angry because he figured he was so high and mighty that, listen, I could have dipped anywhere. No, that's not where the miracle sign and wonder going to come through. The miracle sign and wonder is going to come through following the instructions. So when God gives you a word to give to somebody, it's up to, listen, everybody have a part to play. You are intent, attentive to the word to give the instructions. Now they've prayed, God, I need some instructions. They're specific. I need some instructions on da, 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 da. Uh, uh, I need a breakthrough. I need a healing, whatever it is. Okay. They're praying. God is looking for a vessel. It goes back to, uh, to Acts. Have you believed since you received? Okay, you got a spiritual <laughs> gift. Do you believe that you have that spiritual gift? Because God gonna tell you to do some things. Uh-huh. Pray and intercede. People you don't even know. Countries you ain't never heard of, you ain't never gonna step foot in. Uh, situations that ain't got nothing to do with you. That's a gift. He calling us to assignments. And the assignment he is calling us to is pertain. It will connect to the spiritual gift that is in you. Now, remember, I got a prayer request over here. Somebody praying. He looking for a willing vessel over here. When you do your part, breakthrough come. If you are instructed to go to someone and give them some instructions, that is where your assignment ends. One plant, one water, God gives the increase. Your our job is only to do what God tells us to do. So if he gives you a word, deliver that word. Don't hover over that word. Don't go back to check on. Listen, you pray that, that they receive the word, but if they don't receive the word and act on the word, they ain't got nothing to do with you. You did what was required of you. What I want to get across to us on tonight and for the past couple of weeks is, is do, do you believe since you received, do you really believe? And, and we're going to look at the spiritual gifts. We're going to take a look at those because that's the more, that's the more as we operate in those miracle signs and wonders are going to follow you. You may not, you may listen, there's going to be times you're going to pray about something, a situation. You don't know the people, you don't know the country, you don't know nothing about it. But a breakthrough can take place. Healing can take place. They might not come and tell you right then, but down the line, you might see them. And you know what? You might know somebody need a job and you're praying, Lord, bless them with a job. You're interceding, you're praying, you're praying. Before you know it, 
Where you been? I ain't seen you. I got a job. You know what? Miracle signs and wonders. We're looking for the big things. But we can't even handle the little things yet. And as we find ourselves obedient, dealing with those little assignments, and I'm saying little, but don't misunderstand me. No assignment for God is little. No assignment. He just has to see how much he can trust us with. So if we don't pick up the phone and call when we're supposed to call, he ain't going to give us no assignment to go nowhere. If we don't get up in the middle of the night and pray, then he ain't going to... He ain't going to be giving us no assignments. Over in Mark 16, I'm going to start. Let's start at the 14th. It says, afterward, he appeared unto the 11 as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So, and it's like that. We don't see it. We don't believe it. Now I got to see it. I got to see it. I got to see it. We don't believe it. We don't believe it. But how are, how are miracles, signs and wonders supposed to follow us? We, we, we just got to trust God. We just have to trust the word that he released unto us. We just have to trust that the instructions he gave us, what he told us to do, that you know what? One plant, one water, he give the increase. I have an assignment to do. Uh, I, I'm going to ask him about what he wants me to do. My job is just to do that. I plan it. Or you might be the one that come along in water. It's God that's going to give the increase. And so here he was dealing with some disciples. Thomas was one of them. Thomas said, I don't, listen, unless I, uh, 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 put my hand in his side and, and see the nail in his hand, I won't believe. But remember, he had walked with Christ. He didn't believe nothing Christ had said. He didn't believe the report that came back. Verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is, bapt and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So, if I go back and look at Acts 19 and 2 and say, have you believed since you received, there's an answer. If you do not believe after you've received, and guess what? You're damned. I'm damned. I don't believe. What, am I, what did I come to salva for salvation for? If I only believe up until salvation, yep, I believe, yep, I'm saved. But I don't believe nothing else he say. What was the purpose of me accepting him as Lord and Savior? What was the purpose of my of, of salvation? So I think that I can live hell bent and do any other thing that I want to do and think I'm going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh-uh, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. you, you worker of iniquity. You didn't believe... You didn't believe the gifts that I, of the Holy Spirit. You didn't believe that I wanted to work through you. You didn't believe the message that I wanted you to carry. So it goes beyond just believing for salvation. Mm -hmm. I got saved back in night. And, and listen, this is beyond my age. So I'm really, really paraphrasing. I, 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 I got saved back in 1969. But what you did since then? Nothing. You witness? No. Nope. I ain't got nothing to tell them people. You feed the hunger? I'm hungry myself. You gave any clothes to the clovers? They got they got programs for that. You went and visited the widow? They got kids. They can make it. They, they got programs for them too. It is a great commission. Did you pray for anybody? Yeah, my children, my cousins, my nephews. I prayed for them. Uh, did you pray? Did you did, did you did you did you pray for another country? You know, oh, that's just the way that they are. We got an excuse because we only got to salvation and stopped. But there is more beyond receiving our salvation. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing that we want an increase of the hunger and thirst after Christ, after the knowledge of Christ. 
Don't stop getting hungry. Don't, don't, don't get full today and say, oh, I'm good. Mm -mm. Empty out and empty out by utilizing whatever gift, spiritual gift that's in your life that, that is bestowed upon you. Empty it out every day. Empty. Empty. So that the, day, uh, the next day that he allows breath to enter into your body and you can open your eyes that he fills you again to empty out again. We all have a gift, not the same gift. We're not going to do it the same way. Your gift might be uh, writing a post of inspiration. You know that's ministry. People need words of encouragement. They listen, and 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 I say this so often to um, those I, I mentor and, and and get into that area. Don't look for the likes. Don't look for the comment. Uh-uh. Write the word. God, what you want me to say? Well, what is it that you want me to write? Just, just do the work. Just do the work. Just do the work. Don't, don't, don't get caught up and hung up on, on, a, uh, on a title. He gave. He gave to the church. Spiritual gifts. Ministry gifts. He gave that to the church. But it's a function. It works. It operates. It just say it, it's just not branded on 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 your chest and 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 that's it. That's just like having faith unto salvation only. You got the gift of prophecy, but you won't you you won't prophesy. You hearing a word to give a word, you won't give the word. You got the gift of speaking life into individuals, but you won't do it. But we want to see miracle signs and wonders. We're saying, when is a change going to come? And he's saying, listen, I, I, I got more. If, if you believe after, after you have received me, the gift that I have in you, that's where the miracle signs and wonders are going to come through. When we submit ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, and he gives us what to do. Do you not know the weight of the words that you carry? There is life and death in the power of the tongue. And if we speak what God says, it is life, even if it has some correction to it. It's going to hurt, it's going to sting, but it's because he knows the plans that he has for us. He wants the best for us. So guess what? Every now and then he has to break us so that we can have better. And so if your job... It's to send out texts. Uh, my aunt, Pastor Arline, for years, up until last year, sent out a scripture every single day. That was her ministry. And she had it categorized. The Holy Spirit had her breaking down so that she had scriptures for shepherds and leaders. And she had other scriptures. She had, every single day, she sent out a word. That was her. That's ministry. She didn't post them online because that wasn't her lane. God told her to do it that way. Somebody might not respond, but they got that word. And it came in at the nick of time. It's the same thing with post. We, we can use social media for ministry. It don't have to be bad. I, I, I laugh at a lot of people. Oh, uh, 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 social media, that's for the devil. Listen, what, what's your intent behind it? What you up there doing? Or what you looking at? Get on there. If, if that, that can be your area of ministry. Amen. Sending, sending greeting cards. Mm -hmm. Send them out. Whatever God has given you is ministry. And listen, they're coming in the nick of time. You might just be an intercessor. Where God has you praying and interceding. For different situations and different things at different times. That's your ministry. Miracle signs and wonders follow those who believe. We, uh, we, we don't look to the world for the miracle sign and wonder. He said miracle signs and wonders will follow those who believe. And who are we? Thank you. We're the believers. We're the believers. So I have an expectation that the word that he gives me, when I do it, according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I'm operating 
under the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit, I know a yoke is being destroyed. I know chains of bondage are being broken and destroyed. Why? Because I am saying according to the Holy Spirit. Let's look at this. Verse 17, we're in Mark 16 and 17 says, and these signs that these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay. In my name, shall they cast out devils? How many of you believe that? If you do it in the name of Jesus, he telling us how to do it. And you believe now. Don't just randomly call out a demon. Mm -mm. Holy Spirit. See, remember the Holy Spirit is there to reveal all things. Not just where you lost your keys. Not just uh, how, to, uh, how to get to the money. Or as they say, how to get to the bag. Yeah, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit want to reveal some strongholds. He want to reveal the root of some sicknesses. He want to reveal the, the root of some illnesses. He want to reveal the root of some discord. He want to reveal some things that attach. You ever come across somebody that they just can't seem to, 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 to get beyond a certain mark? They get so far and then it just don't pan out. It just, every time they turn around, it just, it just ain't working. Well, see, I'm kind of nosy because I walk in the prophetic. I'm nosy. So when I see somebody like that, I begin to say, well, what is at work? What's the root of every time they get so far, something happened. It ain't just by chance. Something attached to that. I want to know what it is so that I can strategically pray. I don't want to call out the wrong thing. I don't want to cast out the wrong spirit. Because if I'm calling out the wrong thing, what's really at work ain't budging. Because guess what? You ain't, you ain't talking to me. Listen, I know my name. My name is Angel. You can call Lisa all you want to. I might have told you my name was Lisa to not tell you my real name. And you can call it all you want to. But my name is Angel. That's the only name I'm going to answer to. If you're not calling the right spirit, that spirit ain't going to answer. So he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall cast out devils. Listen, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on with our children? What's going on in the workplace? Do you not see that right now there is a surge of shootings? I had no idea till I looked the other day. They just had something going on in Delaware. <coughs> Mm -hmm. they just had another instance if not late yesterday but earlier today they called a man into a company to terminate him guess what he did he opened fire <coughs> it's a spirit released then we got to see what area is released in it's demographic but I want some miracle signs and wonders to follow me because I believe this thing I'm all in I'm all in I'm all in what Christ has I'm all in I want deliverance to take place I want healing to take place so I'm all in so I have an expectation that when I call a demonic spirit out that it is cast out because mm -hmm. I believe and I have no doubt not by power not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I do it in the name of Jesus. I can't do anything but without him. I'm not going to try to do anything without him. He gives the increase. Another thing, they shall speak with new tongues. As the spirit gives you utterance. Uh-huh. Don't force it. Uh-uh. And listen, you know, you can ask for spiritual gifts. You can ask. Mm -hmm. What's so beautiful about that is you can have a heart to give. And you say, oh, God, I want that gift to give. You know, you already got it. 
You just need to put it in operation and, and ask him how to utilize that gift that he gave you. Put it into motion. Miracle signs and wonders. I can't get away from it. The question is, do you believe since you received? Since you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do you believe that there is more to salvation, to the gift of salvation? That's the gift. But there is work to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he does that work through you and I. How can they hear the word unless it's preached? And how is it preached unless one is sent? And if you're going to go preach the word, once again, the miracle sign and wonder is conviction. A heart is going to be changed. Someone is going to receive the word and if they are not a believer, then they will become a believer. They want to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the miracle sign and wonder. And it's according to the power that work in you. Remember, we covered that scripture over the past three weeks as well. So what's working in you? What belief system do you have for those miracle signs and wonders to appear? We keep looking for a sign and a wonder. Guess what? I think I said it three weeks ago. Go look in the mirror. As a matter of fact, I got a mirror in here. You want to um, uh, 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 look at your phone. Look at your phone. You want to see a miracle? Can you see yourself? You can't see yourself? Turn your phone around. Look at, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Look in the mirror. You're the believer. The work should be coming through you. Uh-huh. If you turn your camera on your phone and flip it, you're going to see yourself. That's where the work coming through. The work is coming through you and I. Okay. But we looking. We looking. Hey, ain't nothing happening over there. Listen, this is my favorite thing. Ain't nobody there. Well, you just call yourself a nobody. One of you over there? He said, well, two or three are gathered in my name. I'll be in the midst. Ain't you over there? But ain't nobody going to be over there. It wasn't nobody there but me and two other people. I'm telling you, he's in the midst if you invite him. He's waiting on some miracle signs and wonders to follow us. We're confessing. We're the believers. Verse 18 says, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, this right here was given on an instance. There was a disciple who did drink something poisonous, and it did not hurt him. At one time, we've all experienced some type of food poisoning. I know I have. You know, ate somewhere, the food wasn't, wasn't spoiled, it wasn't fresh. You sit, you don't know what's going on in your body. Some people don't survive that. But do you not know you can lay your hands on yourself? I'm telling you, you are the miracle sign and wonder. Believe in the gift that is in you. Begin to pray and prophesy over yourself. I don't know what this is. Uh, it, it, it may be my uh, illness, my sickness. It may be somebody else. I quote James 5. Pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. God, if it's me, I know you're going to heal me. If it's somebody else, I know you're going to heal them too. As a matter of fact, God, somebody is going through what I'm going through right now. And I'm believing. Listen, I done took the focus off of me. I'm now interceding. All night last night, I had no idea what was wrong with me. I hurt from my head to my shoulders all the way down. And I'm like, oh my God, 
what is wrong? I was hurting and I was aching. You know what I did? I took out my holy anointed oil. See, I just don't consecrate it and give it as he instructs me to. I got my own bottle. I drink out of it every single day. I keep myself covered. I took my oil out and I begin to anoint those areas and I begin to pray over myself. I don't know who pain this is. It may be mine. What's going on in my body? It could be somebody else. All I know that you are a healer and I command this pain in my neck and my shoulders, this pressure in my head to move up off of me and flee. And by the third time, my muscles begin to relax and the pain was gone. Miracle signs and wonders, they start in your own backyard, in your own house. It's what you believe in. So if you can't lay your hands on yourself, help me, Holy Ghost. If you can't speak life into yourself, if you can't prophesy over your own life, if you can't command Satan to flee from you, you can't do it out there. So do you believe since you received? quoting the word over your own life that's the real test can you speak life to yourself to your own situation when the enemy wants to come in with a spirit of depression can you recognize it can you bind the hands of the enemy and tell him to flee from you you don't accept the spirit of depression it got to go I bind you in the name of Jesus Whatsoever I bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. He has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and of joy and of a sound mind. I do not accept depression. You ever pray over yourself? You have the authority to. You have the power to. Because he says, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I give unto you power. But we must start using that. Pray over yourself. Uh -huh. now we can connect with somebody in prayer but if you ain't praying for your own self and your own situation and you want somebody else to be up all night sweating and crying and 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 going through all and you over there asleep the devil is a lie you better get up and pray i need a word i need a prophetic word well lord what you're saying you better ask him yourself. Amen. Only thing he's going to do is send that person to confirm a word. But you better seek the Lord your God. Amen. It's about our own soul salvation. So miracle signs and wonders are supposed to follow us. Every day. And it's not, listen, it's not because somebody is so special. It is because they believed after they received the gift of salvation. I believe. I just believe what God said. That I can call those things that be not as though they were. I just believe God. I may not know how to pray about a thing, but I believe if I ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me, he will. And so I'm going to wait. If you don't tell me, I won't know. If you don't show me, I can't see. If you don't speak it, I can't hear. If you don't do it, it can't get done. I'll wait on you. And you wait in faith. And he will show up. He will talk to you. He will reveal. Because that is the heart of God. That is the heart of God. We're going to come to a close. Next week, I want to talk about the law of giving. And I ain't talking about no money. It's going back to, did you believe after you received the law of giving. Uh-huh. If we ain't got if I if ain't nothing in me, I ain't got nothing to give. If I'm not and 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 so what 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 am I giving? What am I giving? Am I giving the work of the flesh? Because where scripture says, giving it shall be given unto you. Guess what? Whatever you giving is gonna be given back to you. Good or bad. So think about that. It's a law. It's a principle. This is discipleship. So I know you've been thinking about your spiritual gifts. Continue if you haven't gotten an answer about what it is. 
It's something you probably are already doing. It is a spiritual ministry gift. If you are unsure about what your spiritual and ministry gift is, that is why we have an apostle. That's why we have a pastor. You can definitely give me a call. Let's pray about it. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal some stuff. It is time. Listen. It's time. Their elevation. He can't he can't bring in until we elevate. We got to elevate. Elevate our prayer life. Elevate in our faith. Get on with doing some work of the Lord. You are the sign, miracle, and wonder. And listen, everywhere you walk, it's following you. Every time you open your mouth and give the word of God, a miracle takes place, especially when it is in the hearing. They may not react right then, but something going on in the heart. Don't look for a physical change. Something happens in the spiritual realm first. But we must open up our mouths and give them the word of God. I ain't say give them our opinion. No, don't nobody need our opinion, our two cent. Keep your two cent, put it in the bank, let it add up, make yourself a dollar, go spend it the way you want to spend it. Let's give the word and nothing else. Let us all stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day and this opportunity. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus Christ, which is the word. We thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you right now for how you are shifting us, Lord God. You are molding us, Lord God. Some of us, you are breaking us, Lord God, so that you can rebuild us, Lord God. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord God, for the seed that has gone forth, Lord God, that it is on good ground, Lord God, and that we will begin to just trust your word all the more begin to reveal unto the individuals the gifts that you have already instilled in them direct them holy spirit on how they're supposed to operate in those gifts that they may flourish lord god that the miracle signs and wonders are waiting on them to show up and declare your word oh god i speak a blessing upon your people you know their needs lord god you know where everyone is lord god you know the wants you know the desires you know what's going on in the heart and mind of every individual and and oh Lord God, I know that you'll meet the need. I know that your peace is forever present in Jesus name. Amen.